Welcome to our second tutorial video on GAMSPY. Today we're going to write and solve an optimization problem from beginning to end. The example we'll use is the one you can find in our website, in the GAMSPY documentation. It's the classic transportation problem. In our documentation, you can follow this problem along and it's very useful because you can just copy the code directly from here and paste it on your Python file as you go. So for those of you who don't know what a transportation problem is, it's basically this. Let's say we have two production plants, one in Seattle with a daily production capacity of 350 cases of a certain product and one in San Diego with a daily production capacity of 600 cases. Then we have three different markets, Topeka with a daily demand of 275 cases, Chicago with a demand of 300 cases, and New York with a demand of 325 cases. On top of that, we know the distance in thousands of miles between each plant and each market, and we know that our freight cost is $90 per case per thousand miles. And the problem is basically to find out the most cost-efficient way of shipping the cases. Okay, so let's use GAMSPY to solve this problem. Let's go to Visual Studio Code, open a terminal in our working directory, and activate our virtual environment. If you don't know what a virtual environment is, or you want to learn more about how to set up your tools to start using GAMSPY, you can check our previous video where we cover the full setup and installation process. But before we start coding, let's make sure that Visual Studio Code is using the correct Python interpreter. Great. Now let's create a Python file in our working directory. Let's call it test.py. Here is where we will write our model. Ok, so let's begin. The first thing we need to do is import the GAMSPY library. These are the key components that we'll use to define and solve our problem. And since we set the correct Python interpreter in VS Code, we can see that hovering over a GAMSPY structure reveals its doc string, which includes descriptions and usage examples. Great, so now we'll begin by creating a container, M, this will serve to organize all our components and make sure they have the right structure for our optimization problem. Then we'll begin with our sets. Sets are the building blocks of our model, and they correspond directly to the indices in an algebraic representation. Let's call our first set i. It will belong in our container m. We can add the name i for clarity and a brief description. This will be the production plans in our problem. In the same way, we'll create a set J for our markets. Next, we'll define the parameters. We'll start with our plant supply of commodities. We'll create a parameter A, and notice that the syntax is pretty much the same. It belongs to our container M. It has an optional name, a domain, in this case I, which are our two production plants, and then an optional brief description. Now that we have a parameter for supply, we'll do the same for the demand of our markets. Lastly, we'll create a third parameter, C, which will be indexed at both plants and markets, and this will be the cost per unit of shipment. Ok, so now that we have the final main parameters, let's add the variables in our problem. Note that the syntax is again pretty much the same. We'll begin with a variable x, which will be the amount of cases we need to ship from each plant to each market. By indexing it by both i and j, 
we create a variable for each pair of plants and markets. Also, here we'll add a type, positive, because we can't ship negative cases. Now that a variable is declared, we'll continue with our model's equations. Once again, you'll notice that the syntax is very similar. The first equation we have is the one we'll call supply. This will be indexed by i, our plants, and it will determine the supply capacity of each one of them. Once we've declared our supply equation, we'll add our first constraint to it. And we'll say, the total amount shipped from source i to all destinations must be less than or equal to the supply capacity at source i. This will ensure that we only ship an amount of cases our plants can produce. Next, we'll move on to the demand. For that, we'll declare a demand equation in the same way, indexing it by our markets, j, and we'll say that the total sum of commodities shipped from all plants must be greater than or equal to the demand at our markets j. This will ensure that we ship enough cases to meet our market demand. Ok, now we already have our sets, parameters and equations. The next thing we need is the objective function of our model, which is what we want to optimize. In our case, this will be cost. We want to find the cheapest way of solving this problem. The objective function of a GAMSPY model doesn't need a separate equation declaration. Here, we do it in the following way. We'll say, our objective function is equal to the sum for all plants and markets of the cost x of shipping a unit of commodity multiplied by the amount of commodity shipped from each plant to each market. Great! Now our algebraic model is complete and we can define it as a GAMS pi model. We'll call this Python variable transport and it will be a GAMS pi model linked to our container M with a name and here we can list our equations, supply and demand. Then we need to specify what type of problem our model is, in our case a linear problem, and finally, give the sense of our objective function, which, since in our case it's cost, the sense is to minimize the objective function. Perfect, now our model is finished. Here, we have the algebraic relationship between our variables, equations and constraints that explain the nature of our transportation problem. However, for the moment, our model is completely devoid of data. This is a great feature of GAMSPY, because it means that we can use this model and feed it whatever data we want and it will accommodate without any modifications. However, in order to solve this particular problem, we now need to add our data. So, if we go back and take another look at our problem, we can see that here we have the plant's capacity in number of cases per day for Seattle and San Diego, and each market's demand also in cases per day. Plus, we know the length of each route, and we know our freight cost. So, let's add all this to our model. We can do it by assigning members to our sets and parameters. So if we start with our plants I, we can specify Seattle and San Diego. Then for our markets J, we specify New York, Chicago and Topeka. Then we'll do the same for our first parameter A, which was the plant's supply capacity. So here we'll add the data for Seattle, 350 cases, and for San Diego, 600 cases. Then we'll do the same for our parameter B, which was the market's demand. 
So for New York, it's 325 cases, for Chicago, 300, and for Topeka, 275. Next, we can add the distance between plants and markets. So, using a Python list, we'll say, between Seattle and New York, there are 2.5 thousand miles. Between Seattle and Chicago, there are 1.7 thousand, and so on. Then we'll create a parameter d to contain these distances and we'll assign our list to it. So to calculate the actual transport cost for each route, we'll use the parameter c that we defined early on. We know that the freight cost is $90 per case per thousand miles, so we multiply each distance by 90 and divide by 1000 to express the result in thousands of dollars. Great, now we have our model, we have the data, and we are ready to create and solve this instance. In order to do that, we'll first import sys, which allows us to see GAMSPY's output in our terminal. Now, we'll use the solve statement to create the actual model instance. Then, we'll save our Python file and we'll run it in our terminal. Great, so we can see the output here, and if we go up, we can find some interesting information. First, we can see that GAMS use CPLEX as the default solver for this linear problem. Then we can see that it uses our license file. Then there's some information regarding the number of iterations it took to find an optimal solution. And we can see that, in fact, an optimal solution was found. That solution for our objective function is 153.675. That means that the minimum cost to meet the market's demand, subject to our constraints, is $153.675. Now, if we want more information, for example, we can ask to print the optimal values of a variable x, which was the amount of cases to ship from each plant to each market. Then we save and run our file again. And here we can see those values. We can see that from Seattle to New York, we have to ship 50 cases. From Seattle to Chicago, 300 cases zero cases from Seattle to Topeka, and so on. Now, there are a lot of other things we can do with GAMSPY. For example, we can see the different solvers that are used by default for different types of problems. And we can also see the full range of available solvers we can choose from. And then if, let's say, we want to use highs, we can say GAMSPY install solver highs, and it will download and install it. Uh, in my case, it's already installed. If then we go back to our model, and in our solve statement, we specify solver highs,
and we save and run it again. We can see here that now it's using the new solver and that it has found the optimal solution again. Besides changing solvers, for example, we can also transform our model into latex syntax. So if we say transport to latex and we run it again, it will create a new file that if we open it, it has a model in latex syntax. And we can do the same, but this time transforming a GAMS by model into a GAMS model. If we say transport to GAMS and we run our file again, it will create a new file with our model in GAMS syntax. One of the advantages of optimizing in Python is that there are a lot of cool things you can do in terms of data pre- and post-processing, and in future videos we'll explore the full capabilities of GAMSPY. But for now this is where we'll finish our first tutorial video, having written and solved a model from beginning to end. Hope everyone enjoyed it, and as always, don't forget to check the documentation in our website for in-depth instructions, tutorials and examples. Plus, if you have any questions, remember that you can always write in a forum and you can get expert answers from other GAMS users and developers. Okay, until next time.